All right. Good morning, traders. Happy Easter. If you participate, happy Sunday. Easter roast. <clears throat> my my brisket is in final stages. An overnight smoke. It's gonna be delightful. I I'm imagining. <laughs> Good morning. Sandy, hope all had a great Easter. Thank you, you as well. Press says, happy Easter roast day. Good morning, Perry. Happy Easter, Stephen and Perry. Brisket. Yeah, smashed potato salad. Brisket. Oh, I can't wait. We're going to give it one more minute, make sure everyone's here. But... Uh, the Easter, the egg hunt's canceled at our house. It's a crappy, rainy, wet, sloggy day. Yeah. All right. All right. Officially, good morning. Welcome to the Market Watch Group Weekly Market Prep. My name is Scott. I'll be your host. Dun, dun, dun. Here are the disclaimers, as always. Here is the agenda. Yeah, let's talk about it today. <clears throat> because we're, we're hitting this period of time as we get to April. April's strong. Historically strong. We're bullish. What are your concerns, though? Like, if are you trading bullish? Are you still hesitant? Are things going right? Are they going wrong? If they're going wrong, what? Right? What is going wrong? Good morning, Greg. Good to see you. Yeah, let's have a good dialogue today. Um, it's Easter, so I think we're a little smaller than normal on Sundays. Small but mighty. We'll look at the economic calendar. What's the news? Um, it's first week of the month, which means, of course, employment information comes out the first week of every month. So we know that. We'll look at the order of what's coming and when. Uh, sectors. I feel great about financials and industrials. I feel like we have a, a, a good number of strong candidates. I feel like what we do have for technology if it's related to chips, we've got the best. If it's related to AI or <clears throat> processing, cybersecurity, we've got good coverage there, software. Uh, if you think we're deficient in a sector, let me know. Let's do some watch list maintenance. Um, it's a small it's a small group, but it's a, a, a group of veterans today. So let's go fast and let's maybe run some searches and talk about the watch list and see see what happens there, if you guys are okay with that. Still ask questions, still make comments. Um, and we'll we'll talk about, yeah, I definitely think we should have a, an early week shopping list. I think there should be a number of trades. Ah, that's Press, Press brings up a, a great question. He said, I'm wondering how the bridge collapse might affect the industrial sector. That's a great question um, because there is quite a bit my understanding is that's a big port for cars. Is that right, too? Is that am I making that up? Building major major building supplies. Okay. Cars too and coal. All right. Yeah. Um you're thinking possibly supply chain disruptions here uh domestically from anything coming in there. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Yeah, BLDR, uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Well, here's the thing. Um I think, you know, we with the market 
Yeah, let's see. What is it? Uh, yeah, it could be interesting. That's a great call out. Sandy said it involves money. A solution will be made quickly. They will figure some things out. Agreed. Right? There will be contingencies put into place very quickly. I agree with that. Capitalism will prevail. <laughs> Uh, great discussion so far. Love it. All right. And trading plan. We're at section six, you guys. It's already almost two full passes. At some point, I want someone to be the first. Like, I'm willing to share my trading plan with a finished pro. I want to see some, I want to see some trading plan. Even if you even if you don't want me to share it, I want I'm gonna I'm gonna maybe uh, have you start sending it to me because I want to see what they're looking like. Uh, all right, let's get started. <clears throat> um, March jobs report kicks off new quarter. What to know this week? Yeah, yeah, you're behind us. We're already there. Okay, let's just uh, go straight to the posture. We'll get to the rest of this stuff here in a little bit. We are, oh, damn it. Easter made me miss my, I have a fix for this. Steven, every every week, he shakes his head and he's like, Scott, come on. One of these days, I'm going to shock him. And just take that step away. All right, March 31st, six and a half. Um, I think, what did I say? I thought we might even increase i think right did i say that on friday i can't even no we didn't meet friday we met thursday that's why i can't remember that extra day there's no way i'm gonna remember i thought i thought it might go up a little bit i think i thought okay let's do it long term one and a half if if you uh oh, i love it i love that thread um, pretty soon we won't have to just be threads. We're going to have rooms where we can, you know, kind of have like specific discussions. It's going to be cool. Uh, I'm figuring out some things <clears throat> with discord to really utilize its community features. Um, anyways, good things to come. Let's go out three years. We've been saying, we'll continue to say, I think we have a good read on this. I, I think the lines that we had, then the new lines that we drew, and just kind of leaving it now to see what happens. Eventually, because this has kind of popped above and is above this, I know I'm going to need to change this. I'm just not sure yet where. I might even wait for the for the next consolidation. I, I think we could, obviously, April is one, two, three, four. So about right here. I think we could definitely end up in this area. Just moving on up this short-term trend. But from there, when it pulls back, the question is, where does it pull back to? Then we can redraw and say, that's our long-term trend. And it would be amazing for us to come out of that consolidation. It puts us in the second half of the year with a nice, strong, bullish move. Um, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> we would all love that very much. For this, same score, one and a half. Looks great. Waiting to see what comes next. Short term. We took it. <clears throat> Here, took a quarter point, gave it back. We're just kind of hovering right at this trend line. I think it's slowing down. And so there's absolutely an argument to be made. Let's zoom in a click. I think there's an argument to be made. If someone was drawing this, I'd be like, okay, the hard part with that, that's not really a, it's hard to call that the trend. I mean, it is. That is how it was moving for the last little bit. And that's much slower. That's one and a quarter, one and a half, not a two. 
So if you've slowed yours down, I get it. Uh, we were the, the problem for me is I tend to score in you know in a certain way. And uh, let me go back out so I could see the angle better. The fact that I'm just kind of hanging on to this, I'm gonna still leave it because if it if I all of a sudden score at one and a quarter. And then we have a bullish week and it ends up here. You're, it's going to look real low. And you're like, oh, wow, I'm going to leave it. There's no reason yet. We took it for breaking down. We gave it back for, uh, sorry, we took it for breaking down here. Gave it back here. Last week we broke, but then we came back and we're sitting right on it. I, I don't, I don't know. You tell me, I'm saying no. I don't think there's enough information. I don't think that enough happened that I'm going to say I'm reducing the score. That's my thought. If you want to make an argument, I did look at the tighter trend line, but left my score the same since it's riding same thought process, Stephen. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I'm curious because if we start, sometimes I think I'm I'm holding on a certain way, and others are starting to see it. I want to I want to know. Like, hey, am I? Am I sometimes lagging in my thought process? I'm, I'm relying on you guys. I'm going to leave it two to two. So that's the same volume. This is where I thought it would get interesting. This is where I thought it would be interesting. Uh, let's see. Let's just get some boxes. So we do still have... This here, oh, you know what I could do? I can, yeah, so that's happened. Uh, did we consider this one above average 66 to 72? I believe we did. So, one here, uh, one here. One here. Kind of a lot, actually. I'm not going to draw the boxes because it's kind of too many. It's just going to look like a bunch of lines. Let me just go to the check marks. Uh, bullish, bullish. Um, bullish. Bullish. There's a lot, right? I'm going to say this is bearish. And this is bearish. And this one is. I'm not going to call that one the first one. Um, and the sec this next one I'm actually going to give. I didn't see it at first because I was just looking for the big candles. But this is actually for the buyers. It's interesting because that's a red candle with big volume and it was higher than the previous day. Then you had two big white candles with no volume, but those two white candles were started by this first one. That's where the buyers got their control, right? So um, I'm going to say that Thursday's volume was a tie. That's what the question mark is. I'm thinking that this one didn't drop enough for me. That's a tie. Okay. That's how I see it. Do you disagree? Trust says I always get confused by red candles that are not stellar days. Yeah. Remember red and green is in these candles. And, it, and sometimes different charts can actually construct their candlesticks in a different way. But in this context, the color is based on the day. Where is it relative to the open? So it's red because it's lower than it opened. But if it gapped up, it's higher than it closed. Higher than it closed is what's going to determine is it up or down. So when we're like, it's up, it's up from what? It's up from its previous close. I get it. <laughs> you just keep talking to yourself about it until it clicks 
do we do let's ask this do we have alignment on how i have my candles characterized we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven candles i mean that's like half but they're not all significant thursday is the best representation thursday literally closed exactly where it opened it tried to go a little higher it didn't that's nobody. That was a tie. That was clearly the buyers. This one, I'm saying it didn't drop enough from where it was. Right? It didn't drop enough. It just eh, a little bit down. And I feel like that's reasonable because it didn't continue to accelerate, but just dropped off. Um... Any concerns? If we're good, let's count them. So the ties, I'm not going to worry about counting. I've got one, two, three, four, five to three. So five buying days, three selling days. However, however, these two are, are gone by Wednesday. And then... It's three to three, um, right? Now, the next two to drop off are more selling days. So I feel like we're pretty steady. I am a 0.25. Okay. Mm. I think we could put it to 0.5. Could we? Should we? That's the question. Um. That's, I mean, definitely buyers in control. We're going to lose those, but then we're also going to lose these. We'll actually lose all three of these next week. So the next week with nothing else will be three to two. 0.5 higher? Or excuse me, um, 0.25 or 0.5? I want to I want to know what you guys are putting it up. I'm going to let you inform me today, and then I'm going to put my score. <laughs> well, let's do this as a group. I've got two answers so far, 0. 0.25 and 0. 0.5. Steven, I know you scored yours. I can't remember what you said. Steve Perry's going to the point five point. He says go point two five higher point five. Okay. Okay. Paul says move it up. Stephen has a different take. Okay. I am actually. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with the. Uh, I've got. So what what was your score on that? What was your score? I'm going to I'm going to go with the group. I'm going to say raise it up. I think I even said I was thinking it might um you took oh, you took off. Okay. Okay. Still a positive score though. I'm going to go to 0. 0.5. Now, next next quick little step um let's validate our volume score so here is our begin right and here is our end so if i have a 0.5 what would i expect positive and that's what we got right you can see that's uh that's about four percent right there. Four percent in that window, and we have volume assessed at a point five. If you had it at a point two five, yep, I, I mean, still shows. Um, I'm not gonna say. I mean, look, Stephen, you have it at a zero, which just means volume didn't contribute. 
Okay. I mean, there's no that, that's it. Volume didn't contribute this week to your score. It neither helped nor hurt nor hurt. It was neutral in in giving information. But if you're bullish still, you're bullish still, right? I mean, that's it. Uh Oh, okay. Seven to four, sellers to buyers. Okay. So if you gave some of those red ones. Yeah. So for me, to the to the downside, something that only drops, like let's just focus on this one right here. If it only drops this amount, I'm thinking to myself, that's a tie, right? I mean, those are basically those two days were within like 0.15% of each other. That's That's where I'm like, man, I don't count it. But you got to trade what you see. And uh, a lot of times we still end up in similar places. So helpful. I love it. I love it. Okay. Halfway through. And our score, my score, some scores have slightly improved. Others not. Uh, second half. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go to, why can't I find the window that I want? There it is. Do, do, do. Our score here, this is interesting right now, I think, because <coughs> sector had been lag or major market had been lagging behind the sector for quite a while. And then all of a sudden, and this is a, this is for me, one of the concerns. I don't love seeing this um, one to 0.75 to 0.5, like, whoa, we lost some, we lost a couple sectors. We saw some surges. I don't like that. So th this is certainly a little area of concern. Um, however, the, the the small caps have been amazingly resilient. So it's like, I expect this to stay. And at some point, possibly flirt with the one, getting a one. Okay, so let's go through them. Major market first. Um, we're, we're used to this. We know what the picture is. Um, we're, we're getting to the point where the start of this is just this pullback this this correction so we'll see a correction followed by recovery and then a little while later it'll just be recovery we'll see where that puts us uh okay so nasdaq on top s p sitting then we have our laggards and you can see that we know the russell's got a lot of volatility we know it looks weaker in this time frame it's it's really this post consolidation that that we are looking to see is it going to show up in a leading position at some point here's 133 and you can see this is the second half now only it's not all of the correction it's just the second half of the correction followed by the recovery and you can see that the S &P, the Russell did have the deepest correction. This is where we got ourselves a little overexcited about interest rates, right? It's I, I hope you find it helpful now being able to connect events and and you know impact on the markets where you're like, oh yeah, and then this and then here it was because I think that that's a a, a helpful thing. Um, right to just kind of be able to talk through what happened and where did the money try to go and did it go too fast or right and you're like okay I see it <laughs> it's very I think it's cool I love it Stephen says yes press says yes um, Sandy's giving me a post to not forget to bring up uh, the uh, cyclical chart which I absolutely will do thank you God, our group is amazing right like. If there was like a comparison of trading groups and you stacked them up, I think we'd probably be in first place. That's what I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay. 
However you measure it, doesn't matter. Any any criteria. Let's go through it. 66. Uh, interesting little shift with the S&P on top. And I think, you know, my thought was that was like Apple and it's Microsoft and Apple struggles where like technology still did well, but it was a big enough piece of the NASDAQ that it weighed it down a little more. That That's my theory for this interesting little shuffle. It's, it's not less bear, bullish to me that the s and on top. It's just not traditionally there. Um, but I, that, that was my thought. What do you guys think? Like, do you have a theory? I was just thinking the, just the, the, the weirdness of Apple and Microsoft through this has been interesting to watch. Uh, as we look at the Russell, so now <clears throat> this is, this is the, uh, consolidation so at this point we're past the correction this is the consolidation everything else just sort of had a little pause the nasdaq a little more than anything else and then has recovered but if you look okay we, we see it i'm still 0.75 i'm not going to score this less because i know that when i come down nope i know that when i come to 22 uh, that, that the Russell is showing the most amount of strength. So I'm like, well, it's coming back pretty quickly. I feel like 0 .5, 0 0.75 covers it. Technology has been leading consistently across all time frames. The one time it didn't was just because uh, of some weirdness in two of the biggest companies and technology still held on to all of its bullishness. And those those companies seem to be recovering. I'm going 0.75. Let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm staying there. 0.75 is my score. Sectors now. Same. Love it. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get rid of that. I don't know what that is. Sectors. Okay, let's see what's happening. We we have our our lovely favorites. Actually, this is not technologies here. So there's the this is the weirdness with Apple and Microsoft. Primarily, I would say. Um, Microsoft was sideways um and it was uh dipping. Uh Apple was dipping. But we have financials, very, very strong. Communication services, very, very strong. There's industrial. So those are our big four. Huge rally in energy and materials. That's been our concern for weeks. Weeks. The more it rallies, the longer it goes, the more pressure that's going to put on prices, on inflation. I saw someone with a take in, in, in Yahoo. Tell me if you saw this. It was like, uh, the energy stocks are moving. This is this is a broad based rally, and I'm like, I don't see it that way. But I could be I could be pigeonholing myself to like an old school thought process or like my own biases. I I feel like that doesn't make it broad. That puts pressure. But if if anyone has experience or has read something convincing, put it out there. I'm. Uh, how about we're both right? I would love that. <laughs> that's a great, that's a great perspective. Let's go with that. Um, okay, let's move in. So who's down here? Staples, utilities, right? So what we would expect, this is one of our concerns is discretionary. That's one of the things that dropped off pretty hard and, and tried to come back and maybe we'll see if it is. High through the rest of the year. Oh, yeah. It's already at the gas pumps. We've all seen that. Here's tech. Here's communication services. Here's industrials and financials. Right? Those are the big four that we just love to trade. Love, love, love. And then what? Materials. Surging. Healthcare. Flattening. Discretionary and staples. Oof, we're not sure who's going to be stronger out of those two. <clears throat> Anytime staples is stronger than discretionary for any length of 
time, I, that's a little concerning. I'm thinking that feels defensive. Why why is it happening that way? Why are we putting more money into staples than we are into uh, discretionary, you know, vacations, hotels, airlines, cruises, uh, restaurants, uh, clothes. No, no concerns yet, but this is where we know when we get to 66, it's like, okay, this is, this is the here and now. What do we have? Discretionary at the bottom. That's concerning. That's the, the weakest sector in the last, you know, basically three months is discretionary. Utilities, that's good. That's def that's we want that down there. That's a defensive. So that's defensive lagging is what we would expect. Staples, okay, steady, but still towards the bottom, right? So this is okay. Materials is surging. Technology is stalling. We don't love to see this. Healthcare is okay. And then what do we have up here? Well, all of a sudden we have energy. We still have communication services, strong. We still have financial, strong. We still have industrial, strong. We also have energy. Um, we have in technology pausing a little bit. The rest of it looks okay. I got I to gotta say for me, this still feels like a 0.5. Nothing got exceedingly stronger Energy pu pushing up into that is is uh, energy and materials is is putting some inflationary pressures on things. Yeah, I, I've, it's still bullish, right? It's not like we're seeing any defensive surges, but there's certainly concerning things on that aspect. So it's funny because the sector was so reliable for so long, and it's just like things have. Things have just kind of like, yeah, dropped it. You dropped it even lower? Dropped it to what? Um, yeah, right, press? What, what's what's the, why is everyone so scared of discretionary? <laughs> it's, what's the, what, what's the deal? That's, and that's what's funny, right, is we, we don't, we don't have the answers. We just have the fact that we see it happening and, and we're going to adjust to that. I don't. Dropped to 0.5. Got it. Okay. So you're just catching up to where we got last week. Makes sense. Um, but does that create concern if on our watch list, a consumer or on your watch list, a consumer discretionary trade shows up? Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely see uh, being like, you know what? I'm going to pass on that. I'm not going to take that trade. Um, right, having having some type of an impact in that regard. Okay. Uh, how far did we get? Let's go to twenty two. Who's at the top? Energy. Who's second? Materials. Who's third? Utilities. Yeah, that's that's not great, you guys, right? We don't love to see that's not it's not like panic because this is the 22. The 22 only comes to bear if we were uncertain on the 66, and, and we weren't. We were okay with, but if this continues, we know this will. If the, the longer it lasts here, the more likely it shows up on the 66, which is when the score is dropping. So this is how we get a little bit of like a okay, we're we're a little cautious with what we're seeing here. Nothing, nothing where when we say cautious, we're still trading. It's just like we said, um maybe one consumer discretionary trade on something that's the strongest thing, but not many, right? You're focusing more on financials, you're focusing more on industrials you're focusing more on 
um, an energy trade or a materials trade to get balance from the fact that those are strong. We've been talking about that. And I know several of you have had that. Uh, the top three on the previous press. Um, top three on the previous is communication services, financials, and industrials, but also energy on the 22. Sorry. Oh, yeah, not good. Um, energy number one. Materials number two. Utilities number three. <laughs> energy, materials, utilities. So, uh, yeah, as, as we've seen... A little pausing here. There's been a little defensive aligning. If it's just a little, we're okay. If we see more of this, that starts to become concerning to us. All right. I'm all, we're going to go faster today. I don't think I can go faster. I think that's just like my way. There's a certain pace. Here's the VIX. Uh, our score on the VIX is a 1.5 yeah i don't think i'm going to change that we we so last week this is where we were and it gapped up here and then just kind of came down and it's sitting here at the same place i mean that's kind of a lower high um you know we don't have well okay so here's the deal I tend to look at bodies. And if you look at these bodies and then this body, this body got lower than these. If you look at the shadows, these shadows got lower than this. Why is that? Why am I talking about this? Because um, because we came down here and then we made a low or a high, and then we we pulled back. Now, if if this is my low, this is still potentially a higher low. There's no right answer to this. I would say that the if you have more bullish trades on, you're going to be more inclined to go off of the shadows which means that's a lower high or excuse me that means that that would mean that's a higher low and you're going to add a, a hedge to cover if you see this thing start to turn and go higher from here because our concern is that at the very least it could pop back up even to there right at any time we're we're just always watching for this if you only have a couple of trades or you're in the process right now of waiting for um some bullish trade if you don't have much on it's not a hedge I wouldn't do it. Um, I would go off of the bodies. So does, is there is there ambiguity in there? Yes, there's a little bit. There's it's it, it you'll you may try I have to find like a hard and fast rule and then you realize yeah, when, as soon as you think you have it right the next time you don't like the way that the rule plays itself out. So you I just tried to let what my current number of trades even help to inform it. Why would you need a hedge if you have more trades? If you have more trades, you're more likely to hedge, then you're going to be a little bit more willing to put it on, if that makes sense. Um, ah, you're maxed out on the VIX. Got it. Okay. For me, I can't be because I know it can get down to 11 and a half. It can get better than it is now. That's what I'm saying. But if you're ready to, if you like that level, that's your level, 100%. Okay, final score. Where are you? 6.75. Um, right, there it is. 6.75 for me. Um. I went up a quarter of a point. I'm bullish. Still bullish. Great. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at next week. What's going on? Tomorrow, uh, we will we'll meet back at regular time, uh, usual time. We'll see what's happening. Nothing. Nothing will be released. There's construction spending, manufacturing. There's really nothing going on. 
Tuesday. Uh, 6.5. Nice, Steve. Love it. Tuesday, job openings. Expected to drop by 0. 0.1. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that goes up. Now, here's the thing. People will be like, that's the lowest number we've seen, blah, blah, blah. If you if you look at this on a chart and you look at what job openings were pre-pandemic, it typically was like around four, maybe five million. And that was at a good time. You know, um, this this is this is one that I would actually tell you I did. I never used it much, but I went and I looked at it. I'm like, okay, so this is pretty interesting um, to get a sense of. So we'll see what that is. Then Wednesday, we have ADP. Uh, their last month, got we got 140,000. They're expecting that to go up to 158. That is a steady employment or a steady labor market. 200 plus, that's growing. Less than 100 is, is going to start shrinking. That You'll start to see losses. This is steady. This, is, this will maintain. Um, and this is enough to maintain. So we're, we're not really seeing concerns. Uh, there's some Fed speak, including on Wednesday, Jer Bear. So we have that. Then on Thursday, jobless claims. A lot of Fed speak, actually. Um, I'm not sure how I, I think it takes into account I like when you have like uh, uh, seasonal hires for Christmas I think or do you mean like because um, this is non-farm so it won't be any seasonal like uh, you know farm or, or uh, agricultural type Inventory, I think, would be included. Uh, Thursday, jobless claims. Friday, non-farm. Remember, last month was a big one unexpectedly. They're expecting it to drop, but drop back to 200. 200 is growing. That's a, that's a growing labor market. And in fact, the unemployment rate is expected to tick back down from 3.9 to 3.8. So we're staying sub 4% for unemployment. We're, we're continuing to add jobs at a steady rate. We're continuing to have enough job openings to, to um, supply. And we aren't seeing jobless haven't been near, even near 250 for quite some time. We're only concerned if we see like three weeks plus in a row above 250. So why do I always stress this? If the labor market's good, because and, and here's the thing, it's not just that it's good, and, and that means there's a lot of people contributing to employer-sponsored retirement accounts, which is producing, uh, um, which is supplying institutions with funds, of course, right? But we're, we're seeing signs and indications that because of the steadiness, employment contra or retirement contributions are up People are, are increasing their contributions. That's very bullish. That's right. That's every week. There's more money coming in and more money going to institutions who are now have money in their coffers to invest. So all the fundamental things that we need for a, a market are in place. Is there still a bit of pervasive inflation that we're hoping, re, you know, starts dropping a bit again? Yes. Are interest rates still high that, the longer they're here, the more the, the the economy will start to sputter. It's going to start to choke things out a little bit, which is why we're hoping that it, it, that balance finds itself. But I, I, from what I see in the numbers and what we're seeing here, um, and and we'll get some inflationary data the week following, right? So not next week, but the week following. Um, here is the chart that I said I would bring up. Can I make this bigger? Bigger, 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 bigger. Um, you can see here we are at the end of March. And what do we tend to see? A, a bounce into 
second week of April, followed by so that's a trade window here that we're right at the press, right at the doorstep of. Little little consolidation, then a real nice trade window. So the sick, the seasonal, the cyclical looks good. Um, late June could be problematic based on what? Maybe maybe uh, maybe problematic based on interest rates. Based on interest rates not dropping in June and the market gets a little antsy. Um, uh, who knows, right? I mean, the cyclical is not like a crystal ball, but certainly we've seen enough nice correlation that we like to keep an eye on it, right? Thank you for the reminder, Sandy. Okay, uh, so we know what's going on with the economic calendar. Real quick peek, and then we're going to hit the watch list. And yeah, I lied. I don't have extra time. No, no chance. We're down to where it's like, you know, sub 5%. That's where no one really expects there to be um, uh, any even hint of a surprise. But there's some black swan traders who just kind of keep their trades open, right? And then they just disappear. Mm. Speaking of black swan, put that on the list of books. That's an interesting one. Um, it's an interesting perspective. It's not like going to fundamentally change what you do, but it, it it provides interesting perspective into the market and into like 100-year storms that come every few years, right? Um, so uh, Black Swan. No, that's no, sorry. That is one. That's the second book. The first book is called Fooled by Randomness. Fooled by Randomness by Nassim Taleb or Nicholas Taleb. I, he's a, I think he's Iranian and his, it's Nassim Taleb. Fooled by Randomness. Great read. Black Swan is a follow-up. Um, the first was better. Anyways, June. Okay, it's not two to one. It's about uh, one and a half to one in favor of a cut which is why the market could get disappointed after June 12th if it doesn't get that cut. July, July we start to have much better odds that we have at least one, if not two. Remember, they're still thinking three. So if we don't get the first till July, there's only three meetings left with which to get two more potential cuts. All right, let's get to the watch list because that's always fun. Uh, oh, yeah, very much. Press, glad to add some perspective. Some, some of the feds are now saying only two. Okay, okay. That might be where we have to adjust expectations, most definitely. Uh, uh, Apple. Okay, so Apple, is it is it going to? We got a nice little start, then it had a little bullish or a little inside day, a harami, a pause. Is it going to continue to move? We'll see. AIG. So some of these are just starting to, it's like, is it grinding? Is it ready to pull back? We're not quite sure. AMD sitting on the 50, possibly bouncing. A lot of things just kind of at the gates. A little slowdown in Amazon. Uh, AXP had a consolidation. I would say this actually still looks viable. Um, yeah, I, I think this looks viable. We get a bullish day on, on Monday and this starts to accelerate. This is still gives you plenty of room to get in. Set a tight stop. I think it looks viable. Press says he got in on um, um, last on Thursday, Friday, Thursday, <laughs> right? Yeah, I do that all the time. Boeing. Uh, let's get out of these. I, I I mean, Boeing actually looks like it's trying to put in a a little partial V slash higher low, but uh, for me, break the fifty, hold above the fifty. I'm just not a fan. 
Bank of America, very strong. That's one that you could certainly have gotten in and still be in. Oof, BLDR, that was one that uh, I had identified. Got a trigger. Now it's holding on here. Um, I'm holding on to this. Uh, still in BAC. Yeah, BAC makes sense. City. City had just a little pause right here, and it's just still going. All the financials, just beautiful stocks. Caterpillar looks good. That's one we had been looking at, clearly. Uh, Chipotle, I'm watching to see if it has a little bit of a pullback. Remember, this is the split stock. So we're just going to watch and, and kind of keep an eye on what kind of pre-split activity it, it goes through. Woo, look at Capital One. AXP hopefully catches the same kind of a fire. That one that one turned and then moved quickly. Um oil. Let's go to yeah, oil is just kind of grinding on out. <laughs> oh, Costco. Yeah, financials have been super strong, right, Stephen? I agree. I think Costco's viable. If it turns, it's a higher low. It's it's kind of like trying to move off of this, like trying, trying. The sellers don't seem to be there. I, I think I'd still take a stab at this, especially because there is some movement into Staples. I'm I'm still looking at CrowdStrike as viable, to be fair. Uh, if it can bust out of this thing, I think it has some potential for sure. 365, actually, <laughs> easily. Delta, there's there's some consumer discretionary trying to make a move. DHI, home builders, had a little bit of a flag starting to turn. Here's the Dow. Oh, all right. Look at Ford trying to break on out. Look at that. Interesting. It pulled back and we're like, hey, if this thing makes a higher low, but it just, there was no time. <laughs> I don't know. Did anyone catch that? I didn't. Fast and all looks great, but like with BLDR, Caterpillar's moving, but the other, there's a few that are pausing. And it's, is, it, is the pause partly due to market wanting to see what happens with this bridge thing? Is, it, is there an impact? Well, let's see. Bitcoin, it's, it's choppy and it's, it's struggling right here at this less lower high than this one. You can see the stochastics pit petering out. Oh, look at GE. Tweezer hold. Um, I would expect GE to maybe have an actual consolidation now. Gold's pushing to new highs again. What's the anyone trading precious metals? What's the bullishness in gold? Google. Took some profits last week. Nice. I think Google looks strong, but I'm waiting for the next pullback. I mean, it gapped up. It's not doing anything. I, I feel like as this moves up here, maybe 145, maybe it, maybe it doesn't close the gap. Maybe it just pulls back here to 146 and a half. I would say anywhere in here for a pullback would be a nice trade, but I'm going to be patient for that. Home Depot. Look like it might, but what's the problem? The problem is it's consumer discretionary, and consumer discretionary is now fighting trend. Any consumer discretionary stock you're watching, it's 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 the lowest sector in 66 days, right? Like we're all that's that's not what you're hoping for. So that's a tough one. IBM, that's that's viable. If if you've been waiting for this thing to pull back. This, this had a little bit of a false start, but remember that if something has a strong trend, 
and it has a false start, but then catches and tries again above the 50, I'm open to that. This thing could definitely look to go. So, yeah. IBM. Intel. I, I didn't like it. It was at a lower low, but it, it's it's taking this out. If it gets up, you know, near this 45 level, if it gets to this 45 level and then pulls back, and then uh yeah, okay. Let's be let's be open to it. If the chip sector is gonna be strong, we know that this thing has the ability to move well. All right. Um absolutely. Small caps still look fine, still look good. JP Morgan signal time before earnings, but we do have earnings not too far away. We're we're only a couple of weeks from the next round of earnings that start off with what? With financials. Meta, very close. It's still, and, and I would give it even a little more still. I'd give it down to probably here at four, maybe 470 by the time this comes up. This is still consolidation and tradable. If it goes much further than that, it becomes a sell-off. I don't love that the volume increased on Monday or on Thursday. So you can see that Thursday's volume average was 14 and we got 15. Is it huge? No. But it is, you know, more. We'll see. I still like it. I'm still looking for the trade. Morgan Stanley, again, not long for earnings, guys. We have about two weeks before financials and then a week after that the whole market goes into earnings season and and then we have that that consideration and that's information that we're going to be looking at does that information further push the bull market because corporate strength is still there or is there starting to be weakness where we're like wait maybe the landing's a little harder than we thought so we'll be looking forward to that for sure microsoft this is absolutely <laughs> looking very close to tradable. Uh, if this signals, there will be an alert on it. <laughs> Netflix. Netflix, I think, looks good. It was a little bit of an of, in a grind and sometimes an actual consolidation. So if this thing consolidates back, yeah, anything above 580. So I, I would definitely be thinking about it after that. NVIDIA looks looks fine. It didn't get to a new high, got to the same high. So it almost looks like a mini cup and handle. So if this thing stabilizes and turns, it's expensive. The vols come down quite a bit, but it's still not low. That's mid vol. It's not low vol. Low vol's down in the mid 30s. So you'd still want to be careful with how you trade it. Picard, there's another industrial that's tried to turn, but a little stall on Thursday. PLTR, ooh, got hit got hit i don't remember seeing that on thursday did we talk about how that's that got hit on thursday maybe we did i'm telling you i can't remember three days two days i'll be all right three can't do it qqq still looks fine um smci okay so did not get back up here on this move but uh if it doesn't pull back to here. So if this thing just kind of comes down and it turns, yeah, I think that's a viable thought process for a trade right there, 5SPY still looks bullish. TSM. Yeah, I don't know. That one's that one's falling off a little bit. We'll see if it stays. Here's the VIX looking strong. Waste management. Here's Walmart. I think Walmart viable consumer staples. 
a real quick pass through our uh, uh, sectors. Uh, biotech holding up. Materials strong. Communication services holding up. Energy strong. Yeah, this is not great. We're still seeing plenty of strength in financials, industrials, even technology. Eh, a little sideways, but we'll see what happens. We would definitely like to see technology and communications reaccelerate. We would like to see materials and energy slow down. Um, everything else is okay. So um, that's what we're looking for this week on the trading plan. We are on, whoops, we are on record keeping. Uh, so, oh, not that. Get these logs up to speed. If you're not logging, start logging. Um, we're going to be having a session on that soon. We will be meeting tomorrow morning at 9.15 a.m. Eastern time. I hope everybody has an amazing Easter. I hope your weather is better than ours. Overcast, rainy, and soggy out there. Um, have a great, great Easter. See you guys tomorrow. And as always, happy trading.